Well, I've been thinking about it and as I said in Beijing, everything was going great until we started racing. In London, everything was going great, but we were very aware of how close people were to us because we'd had we'd raced the Germans at the World Cup in, in June and it was a photo finish. We knew we were good, we knew we were capable of winning, but we also knew that we weren't going to take for granted that fact. Um, we'd come so close to the Germans in the World Cup, we didn't know how much they'd improved by in the you know the three months in between. We knew we'd improved, they might have improved more, they might have improved less, you don't know. But they weren't in our heat, so we had the crews that we weren't sure of in our heat and we didn't know what to expect from them. Somebody, you know, there were some quite new crews there, the Chinese that had just got together the year before and qualified for the Paralympics in, at the Bled Regatta at the World Championships. So they were a new crew. So new crews will develop a lot quicker. So we didn't know how much better they would be than the year before. An awful lot of unknowns. Um, so we went in just knowing that we did, we were doing one more thousand metre piece on the water. That was, that was all it was. We've done thousand metres in training over and over and over again. We were doing one more piece. Just so happened there were five other boats trying to get there faster than the first before us. but. Other than that, it was just do what you know. You know, stick with what's familiar and what you've rehearsed over and over and over again. And if you do that and you do it the way you've done it before, you can only be happy with your result. So that's what we went into the heats with. We won the heat so we didn't have to race the reps the following day. And then we went into our final, which it seems like so long ago. <laughs> So on the finals day, we went for our pre-paddle before the late close for racing. So we did our pre-paddle and it was incredible how many people had already turned up at Eden Dorney at that early in the morning. It got to the point where our coach had to stop coaching us cycling on the towpath because we couldn't hear her through the radio because the crowd was already so loud in the grandstand before the race could even start. And it was absolutely amazing. It was just magic. The atmosphere down at Dorney was incredible. They turned this very two-dimensional landscape, this two kilometre long lake, boathouse at one end, nothing else. And suddenly there were grandstands and big screens and this overhead camera, which they didn't use for us anyway, but you know, this, this incredible, almost rowing stadium that they created and the crowd were just, they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. They just brought the whole thing to life. So to go out on your pre-paddle before your Paralympic final and almost be able to hear your mum and dad shouting at you from the grandstand. It just, it makes you feel proud and it makes you feel nervous because you want to do what they want you to do. Nervous because you want to do what you've practiced with the coach over and over again. I, for, for me, I was terrified that I'd be the one to do something wrong and let my crewmates down. You know, there are so many different emotions going through the system at once. We got on the start with about 30 seconds to go, so we didn't have time to get nervous. We just sat there and then we were off. Suddenly, it was like mayhem of the first 250 metres. Such a huge amount of noise because there was a crowd right the way down to the start at Dorney, so there were people shouting. And then there was the five other coxes, and there was our cox, and there was all the other boats that you could hear, all the, you know, all the oars coming in and out of the water. There was just so much noise. And when I've got these goggles on and I'm just trying to focus on what I can hear, it's quite hard to drown everything else out. But 250 metres, okay, that's, that's gone, that's fine. Where are the Germans? Right, we know they're fast. We know they have a first, you know, their first 500 is always quick. Right, they're in the lead. Okay, fine. They're in the lead. We knew that might happen. Our rhythm, we've got to think about what we know. What do we do at this point? Right, the middle 500, that's our killing ground. This is where we make our move. This is where we stay solid, we stay together. 500, Germans are up. How much by? Half a boat length. So, now what? Now what? I can't hear the cocks. The noise from the grandstands was so unbelievably loud. I could feel it. I couldn't just hear it. It was like, in every part of my body. And I just knew that we were gonna have to 
dig deeper with every single stroke. And for me, I was just hoping that the Germans weren't going as fast as us because I honestly didn't have a clue where they were. I couldn't hear Lily. All I could hear was the crowd. And I really do feel that that crowd rode every stroke with us. It's almost like they were in as much physical pain as we were, but they wanted us to, to win so badly. You know, 99.9% .9 of that crowd were shouting for GB. I know there were some Germans there because my friend was standing right behind them. Um, and we came across the finish line. I didn't hear the buzzer, the finish line buzzer. The only reason I knew to stop rowing was that Dave, who was sat in front of me, collapsed backwards onto my feet. So I thought we must have finished, but I didn't know where we'd come. Um, and so I then collapsed backwards onto Pam's feet, sat behind me. And I said, where did we come? And then the words that I dreamt of hearing for, since I knew that the Paralympics were going to be in London, which was, we won from Pam and I just started crying. It was just relief that we'd actually done it. That, that, that race was almost, there was almost desperation. We knew that there wasn't much we could do. We just had to put everything we could possibly, you know, conjure up from the depths. We had to put everything in and just hope that we were gonna be faster than the Germans. And we were. And then we went to the media pontoon, did the media interviews, and I tried not to cry. And then when we got onto the medal pontoon, I actually started to enjoy it. And hearing a national anthem with those metal shrouds in the neck is just brilliant, absolutely fantastic. It's not something that's ever going to be able to be repeated. Absolutely incredible experience.